Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, as you can see, I have three gallons of sugar wash fermenting. The goal here eventually is going to be going from sugar to anhydrous ethanol. But in order to do that, I need a still. I do have a, uh, like, you know, your standard chemistry still, which I have a one liter boiling flask, 500 milliliter receiver. That would take quite a few runs to process two and a half gallons of, uh, of sugar wash. I'd be there for quite a few days trying to get that ethanol. So what I'm trying to do today is build a much larger still. Got this cheap stainless steel stock pot from Walmart. Uh, what is it, eight quarts? Like seven bucks. Probably not the best grade of stainless steel, but it is stainless steel. And what I'm planning on doing is using this uh, 2440 adapter, gonna cut it down the center and solder in a, uh, a copper piece that'll basically slip fit with an O-ring or some PTFE tape. So I can basically adapt glass chemistry distillation glassware to this stock pot and obviously we'll have to seal up the lid. But we should be able to make this sucker work. And the beautiful thing is, and or terrifying thing, depending on how you look at it, I got this super cheap distillation set here off eBay. <laughs> now, that alone should tell you to be wary. Yes, uh, I'm a bit nervous about using this. Now the crazy and or terrifying thing is, this entire distillation set on eBay cost me something like, I think it was $33. Here's the condenser. So you can see nice glass condenser. Gonna pump some chilled water through it. That'll help condense our uh, ethanol vapors. But essentially this is what we're gonna be setting up here. So we got our uh, Vigro column, adapter, thermometer well in there and then the condenser. Trying to hold this all without letting anything fall. And then, so, this is what our setup's gonna look like. <laughs> I don't even know if that fits on screen, but uh, pretty good little setup in my opinion. I think this will work nicely. But the, the critical part is gonna be adapting the glassware to the stainless steel. I was able to find some uh, some stainless steel 2440 adapters online, but they cost like 300 bucks. It was crazy how expensive they are. So, and I thought about machining a piece, but basically you would need to get a very specific alloy of stainless steel to match the thermal expansion of glass. And I just couldn't find any rod stock and it probably wasn't feasible for me to match that thread or taper on my crappy little Chinese lathe. Got the uh, glass piece marked halfway, so I'm gonna have to flame polish the rough end after this, but let's hope it's a good cut. Oh, well that's a bummer, one side cracked. Shit. I was hoping to keep that as a backup. Might still be usable, but uh... So I'm gonna clean this side up and try to flame polish it. Uh, I might sandpaper it first, just to clean it up. Well, disaster struck while I was off camera and I cracked the good piece. So... The bad piece might still be usable, but I think I actually found an easier way to do this. Basically just gonna braise a uh, three quarter inch fitting on top of the uh, stock pot and put the V-Gro column in just like that with a little PTFE tape around it. Totally airtight and uh, pretty darn easy. So. That seems to simplify things significantly. The nice thing about the PTFE too is it makes up for the expansion differences because uh, copper has greater thermal expansion than the glass. So once it heats up, I can probably just push it in a little further. Nice tight seal, 
that should be fine. And of course, PTFE tape is completely chemically inert, at least to uh, ethanol fumes. So I think this is the solution I'm going for. Just gonna drill a hole in the top of the pot, flux these, obviously brush them up, flux them, and then uh, braze the copper insert right into the uh, stainless steel stock pot lid. We should be good to go. Well, I couldn't get the solder to work. It's probably this cheap Chinese grade of stainless steel garbage and uh, solder wasn't able to adhere to it. So instead I'm just using this threaded adapter and what I'll do is seal that up with some, uh, some flour paste and that'll make a nice airtight seal there. Now for the, the clip here to actually set this down, I'm just gonna use a bunch of little binder clips. I'm gonna wrap the top with PTFE tape binder clip it and that should give a good seal if I have to I'll use some flour paste around the edge get it all sealed up but should work nicely you can see the glassware has a pretty good fit in there all right guys so just put some Teflon tape around the rim there sealed it up with some of these small clips add some vinegar this will just help clean out everything for first run I'll probably run this through a couple times you know, fresh water and vinegar each time, just to make sure, you know, any contaminants are cleaned out of the glassware and or stainless steel vessel. Got some flour paste here, just nice mixture of uh, flour and water. Ooh. Just get that in the connection there since that'll be a, a leaker. Got some water and vinegar in the pot here. Uh, lid sealed off with Teflon tape and a bunch of little clips and of course the joint there sealed up with some flour paste. The solder I got for some reason just wouldn't adhere to this Chinese stainless steel. God knows what kind of crappy alloy they're using so I think that's probably the issue because I know the solder I got was good quality and I was using the right flux but it's what it is. So just gonna run this water vinegar mix through and it's not quite perfectly straight. My lab stand, I need to get a taller lab stand or just a thread a, a longer rod. Nerd Rage would be horrified. <laughs> well, let's crack this sucker on. So in a little bit now, we should see some distillate coming over. All right, she's up to temperature. You can see we're reading exactly 100. As you can see, I had to insulate the pot there. The griddle wasn't putting out quite enough heat for it, but once I put that aluminum foil on top, no problem. Vapor front went right up the, the uh, V-Grow column nicely over to the condenser, and we're getting drippage. Beautiful. So super cheap distillation setup. You know, the uh, glassware was 30 some bucks. The pot at uh, at Walmart was $7. And then the adapter from Lowe's little copper thread, that was uh, maybe three or four bucks. Obviously you do want to be careful with this glassware though. It's not high quality stuff. Don't trust your life with it. When I run actual alcohol through it, I'm gonna be doing it out in the detached garage because not messing around with the house. Well guys, there you have it. How to build a super simple and very inexpensive still that should churn out some pretty high proof ethanol. Now, I'm not gonna use this for drinking. <laughs> you'll, you'll see it in an upcoming video very shortly. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to click thumbs up, subscribe, little dingleberry next to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. So just a quick note about this Chinese glassware. In this instance, I was sent what I believe is pretty reasonable quality glassware. It, it seemed to withstand thermal shock. I did run it through a few tests, threw the oven up at 400 and just tossed some glassware in. No fractures, nothing of that nature occurred. But at the same time, if, if I were doing dangerous distillations, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, mercury, you know, the Nile red kind of stuff, I would not trust this glassware for that. Back in the detached garage, I have a much higher quality glassware set from uh, Synthware, which is a, a very good name brand. 
Ace Glass, Pyrex, Kimball Contis. Uh, all those brands of glass are very high quality, very good. You, you can trust them. The, uh, <laughs> the generic no-name Chinese stuff, though. In this case, I'm trusting it with ethanol, which isn't a very dangerous organic vapor, as long as you, you kind of know what you're doing. I would not trust this for distilling mercury or something of that nature. It is not not that level of uh, <laughs> good manufacturing practice you, you want with something like this. So, just a note for you guys there. While I'm using it here, I don't recommend it from a safety standpoint.